Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habati fillah I just wanted to offer, <coughs> offer some general advice and of course it is to adhere to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam and the minhaj of the salaf al-salih ridwanallahi alayhim to the best of your ability Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَقُلَّهُ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ And fear Allah as much as you can. As much as you can. Because all of us are weak and we all have sin. We all fall into to sinfulness. And we all make mistakes. The Prophet sallallahu said, كُلُّ إِبْنَ آدَمْ خَطَّ وَخَيْرًا خَطَّئِينَ أَتَوَابُونَ The Prophet sallallahu said, All the children of Adam commit sins or make mistakes. And the best of those who sin or make mistakes are those who repent. So the bab of tawbah and repentance to Allah Azza wa Jal, it's open for us all. So never give up on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what I wanted to talk about, Habatifillah, is the importance of sticking with the ulama, and I don't mean it as a cliche, because we know so many people who abuse this statement, stick with the ulama, you're going against the ulama, you spoke against the ulama, you're not with the ulama. And they, what they mean by that, some of them, is that you're talking about one or two scholars or one particular scholar. They want you to blind follow. They want you to asim. That's not what we're talking about. But what we're talking about here, Habit Fillah, is the way that the Rasikhun fil Ilm, those major imams of Ilm, that they increase your iman when you listen to them. I just listened to a clip. It was just, I just looked it on my WhatsApp, okay? And that's what inspired me to do this video. And it was Imam Fozan. Half of the law ta'ala. And I, I'm just going to say, you know, I, it just amazes me because he speaks with such strength. When you hear those major scholars, I'm not talking, I love the scholars. And they have different levels. As we know, Ahl Sunnah Tafawit wa Ahl Bid'ah Tafawit. Ahl Sunnah, the levels of the scholars and the levels of Ahl Sunnah, they have different levels. The scholars have different levels. And the people of innovation also have different levels. You can't equate someone who has some minor bid'ah with someone who has bid'ah kufriya, you know, bid'ah that takes them out of the fold of Islam, bid'ah mukaffara. You can't equate them. <clears throat> and we've talked about the importance of ahl al-ilm. But I want to because we're in time of such fitna. We're in a time of such fitna and so much affliction. As I just mentioned in the last video I did. And really... I just want to encourage myself to increase my knowledge of the Arabic language and 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 al wa fiqh and I want to increase you with the same that if you don't know Arabic you are missing on so much there's mashallah a lot of brothers who and sisters probably who are are doing a lot of good work uh, and da'wah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and helping us build us and helping to build our communities bi idnillah ta'ala but there is something those major that they offer you, those major scholars. And I'm not talking about scholars that are just young in age or this, but I'm talking about those who are like mountains. And if you understand the Arabic language, at least something of it, and you've done some talab al-ilm, at least something from it, then you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about. Because you'll see, for example, when I listen to Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wadi'i, Allah yarhamu, you know, it, it increases you. You just feel like going out and do da'wah. That's just, you know, until you die. That's, that's the kind of uh, um, uh, encouragement. Because that imam, one of the statements he said, and I've mentioned this countless times, he said, da'wah to ahl sunnah da'watun ila, da'watun min kitabi la ila kitabi la, wa min sunnati rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, min sunnati ras, uh, ila sunnati rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. That imam, he said that the da'wah of ahl sunnah it's the da'wah from the book of Allah to the book of Allah. And from the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he was striving and fighting against his bia. But now we see so many people, especially people, and I'm going to say, and I'm not going to be those who just down the West, because I promise you in the Arab world, I can name countless examples and I see it all the time, the same things, the same problems we have in the West due to ignorance, due to blind following. So it's not a Western issue. Don't, don't down the West. And I hear many du'ats down it, but if they're truthful and if they spent time in the lands of the Muslims like Yemen and, and Saudi, they'll see the same thing. And if they've been to Indonesia, they'll see the same problems. And if they go to Somalia, they'll see the same problems. In Ethiopia, the same problems. You see the tafaraki, you see the hezbiya, you see the blind following, you see all those same problems that we have due to ignorance. 
and due to other factors of following our desires. And what I want to say is when you listen to those great imams and how they answered questions, also Imam uh, Abdul Masin al-Abbad, uh, you know, when you see these kind of scholars on this level, Imam Salih Sahimi, him Kathir, you you really, you know, they help, they, they increase your iman when you sit in those gatherings. Those are gatherings of dhikr. And when you listen to the, the certainty when they speak, like Imam bin Baz, if you go to his books and you read the way he talked about Tawheed, it's like, you know, Ahlul Kufr was under are pushed in a corner because he's just mashing them with Tawheed, with the with the call with Kitab Allah with Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Likewise, Imam bin Uthaymin, his books they testify to that. Uh, all these great Imams, Imam Sa'di, who did I fail to mention? Imam Al Albani, how could I fail to mention that Imam? You know when you read, uh, you know what he left, and that's why I want to encourage the youth to really get the language and go to them first. As well as sitting your durus and benefit, but what you get in those other durus from other mashayikh, and some of them are imams, some of them are great, but I want you to put it on that scale. And that was advice personally. Uh, Sheikhana, uh, Sheikh Suleiman Raheli, he told me, and I asked him before the last time I went to Yemen, I, sa- I you know, was walking with him, and I asked him this question, and that's what he told me. He told me golden advice, and one day I'll release that recording. And he told me, you know, he said, compare what you hear on the scale of those imams. And so I've gotten way off topic, but I just want to tell, tell, to encourage the people to stick with the book, stick with the sunnah, uh, and stick with those major scholars, really benefit from them. Because the way they speak with certainty, and they don't come up with new kawaii, they just get you, get you, get you back on track. The Prophet wasallam said, and this is what we got to look at when we see all these du'at in the West. There's, you know, some of these guys that they're call, what they're calling to, you, you just wonder, you know, because they departed from the Salafi minhads. That's the thing. They get us away from the Salaf. You know, they talk about all these new things. They kind of slightly, they, they cut the scholars. Bam! Let's just cut them, cut them so that the people come back to me. And it may not be their intention. I'm not judging their hearts. I don't know if they're calling to themselves purely. But it, it just appears strange that they want to somewhat sever the ties, some of them, uh, from the many statements. We're not talking about a couple quotes. We're talking about many statements and their general way of da'wah seems to, to be that in that direction. And they're nothing compared to imams. And they're nothing even compared to our scholars, our younger scholars. You know, they, these guys, they studied with them. And so the Prophet ﷺ said, The Prophet ﷺ said, the Jews will break in 71 uh, sects, Christian 72 sects, my um in 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. He said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon. That shows us that there's going to be a taifa minna, there's going to be a group from amongst us who will be in the fire because of the bid'ah, because of the, the new ideologies, because of the new way of approaching Islam that we've, uh, we've adopted and that they call to. And then there's always going to be those who are on the sunnah, and they may only be few. The Prophet ﷺ said, There won't cease to be a group from my nation uh, clinging to the truth. Uh, until the hour is established, and that you know that's what they're going to be upon. And it's important for us. The only way you're going to be able to distinguish between truth and falsehood, and you can break the shackles of just pure taqlid, blind following, and pure ta'asab loving personalities. Oh, Sheikh so and so said it. It must be the haq. You can't even get in the debate. You can't even look at the issues because you don't have the tools. And that tools, those tools are al mufiq so I want to encourage myself and my brothers and sisters to seek knowledge, at least to be able to distinguish the truth. This is your religion. You want to have some animal basir. I got tired of the, the translated uh, and mistranslations and people speculating and, and adding their own uh, uh, things about what the Mashaikh say and what they mean and who they mean. I got tired of that many years ago. Aren't you tired of that? Don't you want to learn your deen and practice it on Elm al-Basira? And don't you want to benefit from those major scholars? They have, there's so much, um, 
so much they have to offer and there's so much I could say, but anyway, we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan.